here. Happy, happy, happy New Year, you all. It's really, really amazing to see you. Welcome, welcome back. Um, it's been a minute. I think uh, we last saw you or some of you who have been with us. Uh, we saw you last sometime last year. Simon Frank, you disappeared from us. I don't know what are they feeding you in Tanzania. I have not, I did not see you in our last sessions, but I hope you guys have been having an awesome, awesome time and that uh, you had an amazing holiday period and you're ready. Uh, this is Get It Right with Atara Solutions. Uh, my name is Grace Nzula. I'm HR consultant and trainer with Atara Solutions. Uh, we run this program. It's called Get It Right with Atara Solutions. It's a webinar series that seeks to demystify issues in employment and entrepreneurship. We have been doing this since uh, COVID time. Uh, that is July, uh, or rather June 2020, 2020, actually. We are starting season six today. Uh, last year, we successfully ran the webinars for about um, 10 months. Uh, the previous year we had done 12 months and uh, we hope that this year we are going to have an awesome 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 time and we are just going to make sure that we keep learning we keep getting better and we keep just reminding ourselves how to improve so this webinar series is meant to demystify issues in employment and entrepreneurship we are on a mission to change the world through information and i hope that whatever you take away from here will be impactful for you as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as an employee, as a practitioner, as a professional, as a job seeker, as whatever it is that you are, whether you're a, a stay-at-home mom or whatever it is that you practice every day. I hope that uh, the money session is going to help you become better at what you do. Uh, with me is our sign language interpreter, Madam Catherine Sidandi. Catherine Sidandi, it's amazing to see you. Uh, we really, really appreciate you. You do such a wonderful job. Uh, we really, really appreciate that uh, you accept to do this with us and that you believe uh, in whatever it is that you are trying to, to achieve and that you also help us be inclusive. Uh, I remember last year during the teas uh, that we had, uh, one, one, one person who is um, hearing impaired also showed up for the physical session. And the only reason he showed up is because Catherine was there. So uh, if you know anyone who is hearing impaired and wishes to keep learning, please ask them to join us because we have something for them and they will not be left behind. Of course, if they wish to listen to or rather to watch it later, we normally upload all our sessions on YouTube. We, however, are also live on Facebook and uh, we hope that uh, this is going to be impactful. Uh, this webinar series, uh, like I said, we've been running it since um, since 2020 and uh, we've been fortunate enough to have people who have decided to support us in one way or another, some in kind, some in uh, different ways and we are very, very lucky and we don't take it for granted and for that reason, allow us to give them a shout out and also inform you what is coming up on, in, on Get It Right with Atara Solutions. Uh, we have um, some trainings lined up, uh, both paid sessions and free sessions. By the way, all our uh, Tuesday sessions are free. All of them. If you see a flyer written Tuesday, just know it's free. But if you see a flyer written any other day, most likely it's charged. So uh, just be on the lookout. Uh, we have um, a public speaking class coming up, a master class, which is, will be five sessions. Uh, four will be uh, virtual and one will be physical. And you'll be required to come and practice what you've been learning in class. And that will form part of your exam. And then also we have... Um, a road trip coming up in May. Uh, so for those of you who joined us for the road trip last year, please make sure you're on the lookout for this one. If you missed out, make sure that you're with us. And also, uh, we also have some other trainings that are lined up. This year, we are doing two road trips uh, out of town. Maybe next year, somebody was saying we need to go to Ginger. Uh, maybe next year we will get to Kampala because uh, of people like Kina Apollo. But Apollo, I'm sure you can drive down to Kenya and join us in Naivasha in May. 
or even join us in uh, in 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 Sagana in September. But allow us to give a shout out to our partners. We have Pathway Solution Services. Pathway Solutions are a training company. Uh, they have our trainings on um, on their LMS. Uh, if you're looking to study or just learn on your own pace, then Pathway Solutions are your people. We have Panessa Training Institute. Panessa Training Institute is a carpentry school. If you wish to study carpentry, by the way, we have a scholarship for ladies. Uh, you can get in touch with me if you know ladies who wish to study carpentry, and we're going to give them scholarship. The only thing they don't get is accommodation, but... Uh, uh, Institution is fully paid out. We have Ndovu, Ndovu.co, uh, um, they are into investment. If you're wondering what to do with your money, we are going to be teaching you that on the first week of uh, February on where to take your money, especially right now after you have learned how to budget. The next thing will be where do you take your money after you have saved? And I'm sure Apollo will be speaking about saving. And then we have Star Discovery. Star Discovery is an insurance company. Uh, if you're looking to change your medical insurance, your car insurance, any other insurance that you're looking to have for your people or for yourselves, then Star Discovery are your people. Uh, we also have Elsamea. Elsamea is a hotel located in Naivasha. It's one of the most beautiful places I have been to. Uh, that is where we are going for a road trip next. Uh, we have Profiles International. Profiles International are your people. People, uh, if you're looking to become an, a Gino certified emotional intelligence coach, uh, this is your, your chance. They also offer psychometric assessments. They have personality uh assessments by the way they offer disc assessment it's an amazing tool to just know who you are who are your workmates how can you make better teams how do you improve and work together we also have uh nile front cottages my god nile front is magical nile front cottages are located in ginger uganda um, if for those of you in Kenya, you just need to drive from Busia, it's two hours. If you want to fly from Nairobi, just fly to Kisumu, take a car and drive to Jinja. You can also fly to Entebbe and then drive to Jinja. Or just take a road trip from Nairobi and slowly you will get to Jinja. It is so beautiful. It's right uh, at the front of River Nile and Lake Victoria. Uh, the ease of access from Nile front to the the where uh, Lake Victoria meets River Nile is like um, like what 15 minutes boat boat ride. It's such a beautiful place, my God. And then we have we have our partner um, Steadfast Quality Solutions. They are in human resource and public relations located in Kampala, Uganda. This is a company led by my good friend, Herbert Zake. Thank you, Herbert Zake, for introducing me to wonderful people like Apollo and also for just sharing our flyers in Uganda. We really, really appreciate your partnership. We appreciate that you have chosen to also um, join us in this um, uh, whatever. <laughs> in our quest to change the world through information. So thank you very much, Herbert Zake. Of course, we have Kapula Mintito and Wiklin. Kapula Mintito, they offer coastal goods. Uh, they offer coastal snacks. Uh, if you attend our, our tea, you remember they brought us cashew nuts. Everyone took home a packet of cashew nuts. That was delicious, my God. Of course, Wiklin, they also offered our people, um, uh, some people got a chance to win their carpet cleaning uh, and their sofa cleaning. So that is, they're in the cleaning business. And I do not stay with a dirty house, especially if you're in Nairobi and it's raining the way it is. Uh, right. So thank you very much, our partners. We really appreciate you. Uh, allow me to welcome you to our next webinar. This is happening um, next Tuesday. Of course, there's a webinar, but this is a paid webinar that is taking place on the 15th. And we are discussing the issues or challenges and intrigues in the legal uh, grounds on, on matters medical uh, in the workplaces. So if you have been wondering what to do with the people who have been unwell, they've been gone for so long, or or is there something like retirement on medical grounds, or uh, what do you do when somebody's on sick off and then they, they are in the middle of their leave and they fall sick, and what do you do with that? We shall be demystifying all those things. It's only going for Kenya Shillings, uh, Kenya Shillings 2,800. Uh, it's going to be on the 15th of... Um, February, right after Valentine's, uh, so we are not interfering with your Valentine's, uh, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. By the way, on the Tuesday of uh, the Valentine's week, we shall be discussing compatibility with your partners. Oh, I am totally looking forward to that one. 
And uh, yes, grandson, thank you very much for coming back. Right, I know I have taken a bit of your time. I needed to settle in. This thing of hosting alone is still, I am still trying to figure it out. I will definitely work on figuring out what else to do. But I'm lucky that uh, Catherine is still with us. And of course, uh, we still mourn Kevin and we still uh, pray that his soul rests in space. At this point in time, allow me to bring up uh, Mr. Apollo. Mr. Apollo is... Um, uh, head of Financial Literacy at NSSF Uganda, and he has amazing, amazing stuff for us, and I will allow him to introduce himself as well. Apollo, please take it away. Thank you so much, Grace. I will just do a little video for, uh, I hope you can, uh, I'm trying to work out with the lights. It's not, it's not really, really working out for me, but uh, I am I am a living person that uh, that has been that's now out of the way. Uh, it's not a robot. Thank you so much, Grace. And uh, as 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 said, uh, if you could kindly put up my slides, you would give me strict instructions to use thirty minutes, and I want to do just that. Uh, we are kind enough to share my slides. I work with the NSSF, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to have been. Uh, my time here is being. Uh, sponsored and taken care of by NSSF, um, NSSF Uganda. Of course, we have some uh, NSSF in Kenya, we have in, in, in Tanzania, but this is NSSF Uganda. Uh, if you are kind enough to go to the first slide, I will just do a brief introduction. In Uganda, I, I never do this because in Uganda, we know each other, we're almost like a neighborhood, but uh, I got to understand that this is now not Uganda. I have to really, 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 uh, start with introducing myself. I'm shy introducing myself. I usually like it when other people do it for me. But I just a little bit about me. I, I work with the NSSF as a financial, as the head of the financial literacy unit. Uh, I've had experience with the fund management, banking, and insurance industries prior to this. I also have business interests outside NSSF uh, in real estate, a little bit in transport. Uh, in the, in school business, that is now my main main uh, my flagship businesses. This is the best the 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 the, the one I think that I have, I have I have attained and I, no one can take this from me. Uh, being a, a a wonderful husband, I always tell that to myself. I don't need someone to tell me. A wonderful husband to one wife and three amazing children. I'm also a I am also a behavioral a behavioral financial planner. Uh, certified and accredited. That is why you see them both Apollo ABFP. Yes, thank you so much. I am glad to be uh, appearing on the screens of Kenya, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. I cannot say we are live on Facebook in Uganda because for us, Facebook is illegal. We do not do those things, but we shall leave them to. So I'm happy to be on Facebook of legally in another country. If we could please go on to the next slide, I will. Uh, try to jump into this quick, quick. I wanted to give you a little bit about what NSSF is because they have paid for my time to be with you. And we have fund, a fund of about 2.2 million members. We had about 19 trillion, which is about uh, $6 billion around that. Um, and we are about 12% of Ugandan GDP. Uh, yes, we hold our assets about 5% on the Uganda Securities Exchange, 27% uh, in domestic, that's in Uganda. Uh, the majority of our, if you could go to the next slides, people really don't know, need, need to know this. Uh, what, a little bit about NSSF, it's by act, it's voluntary, uh, it's, it's mandatory, you have to, we do 15% for anyone who is not in the uh, government uh, services. I know it's a bit different on, in Kenya there, that's why your NSSF is a bit smaller, but here it's the main fund, then the, all the others are the voluntary other uh, optional funds that you can opt to. But while I say this, I would also want to uh, uh, put it in perspective. Why is NSSF? Because NSSF is, is, is there by law. Why is it interested in having a financial literacy uh, manager on its staff? One of the things that, that is key, and one of the reasons you asked me for uh, to, you asked me to come to this is, while we collect money on a daily, on a monthly, we get the time reaches when you have to hand over this money to the owners. Our statistics have shown, and I've seen them not so different from all the other countries, that only 5% of the people who have graced a workplace 
are able to live a life they were living before they got into retirement. And the reason is not because they have been given money when they are old. The reason is because they have always had poor financial behavior. And at the time when you give them that money, those poor financial behaviors are just explode. They, they, they just get explosive. Because they have had poor financial behavior with a million Uganda shillings, give them 300 million Uganda shillings. It will just explode. So we need to have a conversation with people about their money way before they get their money. So we need to have this conversation in a daily. And that is the reason I am at NSSA. And that's the reason I'm probably here. Thank you so much, Grace, for inviting me. Thank you so much, Herbert, for introducing me to such a wonderful lady. I, I promise I'll forget you, uh, Herbert, now that I've met Grace. If you could kindly go to the next slide, uh, the people need to leave this place. So as NSSA, we do this across all that, that, that across the profile, we before people get into employment, while they are at employment, and after they leave employment. Now, the topic, the things of money, the things of budgeting that you have all us to talk about today are not for people who have gotten money. They are for people before they get money. They are for, for people while they are earning money. And they are for people while they are spending money in their retirement. And this, we need to understand that uh, ecosystem. So while you are, we are having this conversation, it's a PG, please call in your children and let them hear this. Some of the things that the children will, they will actually put you to task to ask you, what have you done about this? And they are good accountability partners because they have not really, really uh, got grown into the bad manners that some of us were unfortunate to grow with and with, we have normalized them. So this conversation continues. That's enough about NSSF. Let's uh, kindly go on to why we are here. Uh, you can just skip that. NSSF, we do this because we want everyone to have options. But why am I doing this today? Allow me to just state this and probably it will come up. I will, uh, the interpretation is up to you, but I need you to understand that growing old is mandatory. When you woke up this morning, you all grew old. But growing up is optional. Now, this interpretation may be different from the different countries. Let me not give you bias with mine, but allow me to just go into the next slide. So that's budget is our particular lesson today. So what is it about the budget? When I was being given, if, if you are kind enough, uh, Grace, go to the next slide. When I was being given the brief, they told me that the economy is doing badly. Now, I, I went back and started doing my Google search and asking around. I have never had an employer, I've never had an entrepreneur say the economy this year is doing well. The economy is always doing badly. Actually, we are using this word so often that it has now started seeming like an excuse. Indeed, the economies are doing badly. The taxes are going up. But I don't think it is the reason we are doing, we are where we are. So what is the budget? And maybe while you came here, we're thinking about, we're going to start about the budget. But for me, I am quite sure that a person who has a gadget, who, has, who can log in on Facebook, who can log in on uh, Zoom, really does not need to be taken through what a budget is. They know. You people are HR managers. You people are officers. You are supervisors. So you are doing budgets for your organization. But to just uh, do it justice, a budget is a statement of expenses and incomes. If you are kind enough to just put the slide. It is also the second one. It's also a proposal of your incomes and expenses. What do you propose to get this year or this period, the next month, next week? What do you propose? How do you propose to spend that? But in personal finance, and this I quote from one of the gentlemen, a budget is telling your money where to go. Instead of wondering where my money went, I'll repeat this. Now, all of you are very accomplished uh, managers or whatever you are, or uh, entrepreneurs, wherever you have huge titles. People fear. Personal finance will bring things a little bit home, a little bit personal. I hope I, I, I did. You didn't lose me. Someone tried to call my phone. We bring things a little bit home and we say a budget is that item that tells you money where to go instead of you wondering where did my money go a number of us have had 
we have we have had quite a number of, 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 of instances when we are saying I had some kamani, I had some kamani. Where did that? I'm wondering about. I hope I didn't lose you, Grace. Oh, yes, you did a bit, but you're back. Okay, thank you. Someone tried, to, uh, but I've, 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 I've changed the devices. So in personal finance, you need to understand that a budget is that tool that enables you to command your money. In this, what you learn that if you are budgeting, then you are in control. If you are not budgeting, then the money is budgeting you. It is controlling you. If you're you kind enough to go. So ask yourself why we begin this year. Am I telling my money where to go? Or it's the one telling me where to go? Oh, once it's gone, I'm wondering what happened to my kamani. In Uganda, we call it some kamani. We had some kamani. What happened to it? So a budget must be written. How you write it, I, but it must be written. Do not say you have your budget in your head. It's not a budget. Those are thoughts. It must be written. It is a proposal. It has to be done before. A proposal is done before. You don't marry your wife, then in year 10, you propose to her. No, you propose before that day. And if you are lucky enough and you didn't propose, and but you got married, you skipped the whole thing of the proposal. Now you, you, can, you can see people doing flowers and all those things, and you say, thank God I am married. You don't do a proposal after. It has to have an objective. Ladies and gentlemen, if your budget doesn't have to have, it doesn't have an objective, then eat your money. Please eat your money. Because you are, Without an object, you are just postponing the obvious. It has to be a fair reflection of who you are. You don't budget on a billion dollars when you have not gotten a million Kenya shillings. It is. It has to be a fair representation, fair reflection. And budgets can be in formats of Excel. They can be in apps on your phone. They can be on a piece of paper. But it has to be somewhere. We are dot com people, so you, are, you can even complicate and have it on this cloud, that cloud, that server, that server but it has to be somewhere other than your head. If you're kind enough to go to the next slide, please. So just, 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 uh, I want to talk about the budget and you, the next slide, thank you. You and the budget, let's, 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 we have talked about, we, I know I was asked to talk about budgeting amidst the economy, but I feel like, I am too small to change the economy of three East African countries, but I am big enough to change the person who is listening to me here. While we, are, we shall leave the MPs and all the politicians to care about the, the governors to care about the economy, let's, let me focus on you. Let's get personal about your budget and talk about you. So that we are ignoring that, yes, we are ignoring it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But do not overestimate your effect on the economy or the effect of the economy on you. Sometimes they talk about inflation, but you cannot feel the effects of inflation if you have no money. You need to be in the money economy to actually get the effects of the money economy. If you're not contributing to the economy, you, you sometimes you are saying, I am not getting my money because of the economy, but in actual sense, you didn't even put out anything. When the economy is, when has the economy ever been good? I need you to just reflect back, and I started by, by asking this. There is never a time we have seen where the economy is good. But if it was that, if that time was there, what did you do during that time? So sometimes we may overestimate, but I'm saying I'm not underplaying the effects of the economy. For an entrepreneur, these effects of the economy are quite real. For an employee, they are also quite true, but the pressing that it's pressing more on the person who's signing your check. For the entrepreneurs, it's probably getting into your pocket immediately, even as you get. But today, allow me to just uh, uh, get get myself to talking to to you as the person. If you are kind enough to go to the next slide, please. I know these people need to get away. So, as we talk about this, and allow me to just give me this leeway so that I can piece these things together. I'm going to finally bring them together. We're saying so many words, and then we shall bring them back together. I know most of you, please just put all that four down. I know most of you are talking about financial capability, about budgeting, because you are yearning for financial independence. You are yearning for financial capability. Because better financial capability is equal to a better life. But financial capability is defined as these four things, if Grace is kind enough. One, knowledge. She has uh, already put that. Knowledge is the facts, the information, the skills acquired through experience or education. The theoretical and the practical understanding, knowledge. 
So if you're talking about financial capability, what's your knowledge about money? What's your knowledge about budget? Grace, please go to the next slide. The next, just press next, not the next slide, but next. Two, financial capability is about your attitude. The way you think about this thing. Some of us are thinking the economy is against us, we shall never prosper while your neighbors are building something. If you're kind enough to go to the next slide, yes, Stephen, we shall get this, this it's being recorded. And then your behavior. Financial capability is about the knowledge of what you know, what you know, the attitude, what you think about that that you know, and then the behavior. What do you do about what you know? At this call, I can tell you 100% of us know about budgeting. You do not need to be told, but maybe you have an attitude that every year someone needs to remind you. You probably are doing the budget for an organization. But what is your behavior when it comes to as an individual? You know you cannot spend money in the organization until the budget has been approved. But what are you doing? What's your behavior as an individual? Ladies and gentlemen, let's try to piece the knowledge we have about you. Because all this financial capability is about you. If you see in this circle, we do not even talk about money at all. Because money is a given. If you have mastered these three, money is inevitable. If you have not mastered these three, you will still have money and money will leave you. We shall still have this conversation every day, every day, every day, and we shall still uh, get back to the same point. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about knowledge. What are your incomes? Do you know? We're talking about a budget and maybe we came here to do the excels and all that, but let's first talk about the soft points do you know what your incomes are as an individual do you know how much you earn in the entire year do you know what you actually spend do you know the quality of the above what is i may be having 25 income streams but what's the quality of those income streams someone may have one income stream but it's quite high what's the quality what's the what's the value are you in charge of where these things are going are you in charge of your incomes? Are you in charge of your expenditures? Or they are in charge of you? Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot start budgeting if we do not have the knowledge of this. You need to have this knowledge. Do you know your financial address? Who are you in the financial world? Where do you pick up the budget? Where do you belong to? Are you self-aware? Do you have the knowledge about yourself? Are you poor? Are you middle class? Are you wealthy? And who? what constitutes this? Because the poor people are not, are not the poor working... It's, we call them the working poor. It's not that they are being paid less, but the working poor are constantly buying things they don't need. The middle class people are buying liabilities constantly. It's only the wealthy that are acquiring assets, and assets are not just land. Assets can be a treasury bill. Assets can be a unit trust. Assets can be as low as, allow me to use Ghana shillings, as low as 5,000 Ghana shillings. So ladies and gentlemen, where are we? Before you start budgeting, do we know these things? Who are we in this world? Because sometimes you are wasting your time to budget when you actually don't know your incomes. You are just picking up someone's budget and then posting it. You don't know your actual incomes. You don't know your expenses. It starts from knowledge. Let's go to the next slide. And we are about to conclude. We are going to conclude. I, I, I promise. Knowledge. Attitude. You make entity budgets. Why don't you make personal budgets? Ladies and gentlemen, this has to do with our attitude. We think we are different, or we think things are obvious, or we think that we are small enough to be affected by these things, or we can't make any difference. That's your attitude. That's your attitude. We are having this conversation. Ideally, we are, we, we are the cream of where we are, but we are having this conversation. This conversation should be the list of our concerns. We, 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 we have phones in our in our possessions that do amazing things, connect to the globe, we can talk to, to the world that they snap a check. Why should we be talking to, about a budget? But our, our attitude has convinced us that I need someone to come to tell me about something before I do it. What's your attitude? But you're already making your budget. You have vast knowledge of budgeting. What is your practice? What's the practice from this knowledge? Ladies and gentlemen, in Uganda here, we call, they have something we call Mputu, but you, I don't know what it is in Swahili, but it's mainly big-headedness. You develop big-headedness when you keep consuming knowledge and don't practice any of that knowledge. That knowledge keeps getting into your head and your head keeps becoming bigger. The more it becomes bigger, the more you become big-headed until you practice. 
big headedness your attitude leads you to big headedness you are just consuming you are every cpd you are in here for the cpd you need a cpd you need a certificate you need you you actually you have your cv is three pages for certifications but your practice is zero big headedness what's your view on money what are you waiting for to raise a budget why we have started that yeah you have done all the things but why haven't you done a budget ask yourself does budgeting constrain you or does it empower you that is again what comes your attitude let's go to the last one ladies and gentlemen i need to to let you go uh, i have been given behavior 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 ladies and gentlemen a budget a budget would modify your behavior a budget will because you have a budget or you don't have a budget we can tell what, by what you buy when you buy some people buy whatever comes on the market they will buy as a behavioral fi financial planner, I know there is something we call framing, mind framing. There is a reason why at the supermarkets they put those smaller, smaller things at the exit because they know people have no budgets. While they have bought whatever they need to buy, they will spend a little bit more on the sweets, the chocolates as they get out. They, they have alert your behavior, defy them. Your budget is supposed to shape your behavior. It will tell you when to buy. You are telling your money where to go, when it should go, where where you stay. What is your it should it should shape your behavior on where you stay, on what you drive. It is not the money that should shape you. She should shape this. It is your behavior. A budget is supposed to be liberating, not constraining. Ladies and gentlemen, and remember, I'll speak about it as I as I finish. There is what we call sticking to the budget. And using the budget, a budget is not to be stuck on. A budget is meant to be used. It's it's a guideline. It is not something that will tell you your food money is done. Stop eating. It is you looking at it and you are saying my food money is done. But have I used up the fuel money? Can I switch some money? You are in control. You are telling your money. I now need you to get out from the fuel line and come to the food line, because you are getting into the priority lines. It's not about your food money is done stop you take the fuel you can drink fuel if you want so a budget will shape your behavior ladies and gentlemen an output of a budget will be your behavior we don't need to by the way we behave we shall know whether you budgeted or not if you if you have a budget there is no there is no way you will get late for an event they tell you come at eight and then you are swelling in at eight thirty with a budget because you have but you are getting into the behavior of budgeting you not only budget for your money but you know what brings in your money it's your time so your time if you tell me be somewhere at, at, at eight and i now have to be there 15 minutes early grace will tell you that i was in 15 minutes early and at eight i wanted to start but then she did the honorable thing which which is always noble in in, in, in african culture let us wait. Let us give it five minutes to wait for the late comers. We usually award the late comers with those ten minutes of our lives. I, I, I was a guest. I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell her. But usually in Uganda, they know me when it clocks eight. When the host has started, I just start because I have budgeted my time, my one hour. When it clocks, I need to go away. It is what makes my money. Your behavior, your budget will get, get into your behavior. As we find, as we finish, I now said this so many times, but we are definitely going to finish. Regardless of the 10 minutes of hour that were eaten away by the late campus. So what I might take, unveil yourself. Stop, get away that corporate image. Don't hide behind the economy. Let's do things. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever has happened in the economy, it's not going to stop your cows from breeding. It's not going to stop your banana trees. It's going to uh, stop your, 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 your maize plantation from breeding. Whatever is happening in the economy. Don't hide in the economy. Keep doing Hard work has never run out of passion. Of course, problems are an indicator that you are doing something. Some of you have no problems and it is understandable, but you can't have a money problem if you have no money. You cannot have a, a you can't have a, a marriage problems if you are not you, you are not married. So if you don't have problems, not part of yourself. No, your problems can't come to you. They will only what has your salary, your salary trajectory been? I can tell you, your salary trajectory has been increasing. Every year your salary has been increasing and don't apologize for that. Of course, it keeps increasing, but you keep blaming the economy. But if it hasn't been increasing, you are responsible. Why hasn't it been increasing? Ask yourself, why is it that people are getting more money and I'm not getting, it's entirely your fault, not the economy's fault. 
become more and more skilled. Someone will desire you keep doing what you need to do. Someone will identify you. They will take you away from that company that doesn't appreciate you. But if you are stuck at that company that doesn't appreciate you, that means it's unlikely you'll be appreciated in at any other. It is about you. Take responsibility. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I need to believe these people before they turn against me. Purpose. The next one, kindly purpose to work for money, skill and work hard, but appreciate the process. This whole process, budgeting is going to lead you into process. It's going to lead you into making difficult decisions. I'm not saying that when you start budgeting, their life is just going to go at a trajectory. Things are going to be good. No. When you start to budget, things actually may even turn the other way around. And you'll even wonder, why have I started budgeting? But appreciate that process. Some of, you may need to go through some of this and then grow through them. When and you should appreciate that. If things are rosy, please get worried because at certain point, when they get bad, you may not know how to handle them. But once they get bad and you handle them, you can now appreciate the rosiness of things. Appreciate the process. I am not here to tell you that immediately you start budgeting at the end of the year, you are going, yes, you will start budgeting, you'll do everything right. I can tell you things may go wrong, may still go wrong. But when you are doing what you're doing and you're looking at it, it's a process. You will actually appreciate, you will know where, where to get in. Ladies and gentlemen, as I finish, let's resolve. If you see that word, it is resolve, meaning whatever we are doing, you have already solved, but you're just solving it again. Let's resolve. It is the, it's, it's the beginning of the way you're sharing resolutions. And for me, I usually pick one resolution. So I'm going to share five. Pick one and budget it to life. When I talk about budgeting, allow me to just go back a little bit. You probably expected an Excel sheet. For me, I'm telling you the budget is your behavior. The budget is how you look at things and then you put them down on paper and then see how to spend on them. So pick out something. Resolve. Pick out one resolution here and budget it to life. If, if you are kind enough, Grace. One. Number one. Shun motion. Resolve to shun motion. And embrace movement. Shun motion. Embrace, it's not even movement, embrace progress. My apologies, because motion and movement are almost the same. I didn't want to use movement in Uganda, it's a different thing. But shun motion and embrace progress. I will correct that before I share this. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be in constant motion, moving in, you are at every webinar, you are doing everything, everything they are saying, you are at this road show, you are at that uh, uh, ride, you are at that road trip, that road trip, but you are not progressing. Whatever you choose to do this year, don't just be in motion. Try to find how am I progressing. If you had 100,000 Kenya shillings last year in a savings, this year, if you have 100,000, that's still motion. Can you, can you progress? You can even progress downwards because there is a reason. Maybe even just staying at the same day, something that you are not doing right. But whatever you do, you need to look at progress. Tell, resolve to tell your money where to go. From, from this, just pick one and run with it. When you get into the habit of telling your money where to go, at least one month, at least once a month, you will get into the the part of where you need to budget for it, for you to tell it where to go. It will just, it will just get you into that bit of budgeting. Have a happy accident on your account, at least once this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I call it a happy accident and allow me for the employer, for the employees to, to describe this. A happy accident is when money, we are in January, is when the money of January, maybe I'm using the wrong month, let's use February and January, is when the money for February, meets the one even january and february it's, it's when the money for march meets the money for february ladies and gentlemen that's an accident your accounts will get shocked sometimes the banks may even call you to think there's a suspicious transaction but resolve that before the year ends you will have two months money and that takes planning that takes budgeting that takes you monitoring how do i resolve this Ladies and gentlemen, it's not an easy thing because you've been working for 60 months, but you don't have 60 months money on your account. You don't have one month's money. For 120 months, you've been getting a salary every month, but you don't have one month's money on your account right now. And you're saying, this is a long month, it's January, we make fun of it. But how is it? You knew January was coming. But plan, resolve. 
go out and say, resolve that this year I will, I will get too much money. Then when I get too much money, I can start telling my money where to go. Before it was telling me school is coming, let, or take, let it's going to school. Landlord is coming. Let's fuel. No. Number three, let me leave this. Do one thing that is above your age. When we began here, we, we said growing old is optional. Growing old is mandatory. But growing up is optional. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be introduced somewhere as Musei. In Uganda, Muse is not just an old person. Muse is a person, you can be 26 years and you are introduced as Muse. Why? Because the things you are doing are above your age. You are 26, but you are the one paying. We are waiting for Muse to pay us. You are paying 56. So do something where you are the Muse. You are doing something above your age. Resolve, and this is the final one, resolve to confuse your neighbor. In the corporate world, we are assumed to drive a certain car. When the certain car is on the market, it's what you shall drive. You will eat meat on this. You will go to the village at this. You will live in this apartment. Confuse your neighbors. Get that amount of money and you do the opposite. You don't have to go with what the world is dictating. But you know yourself. You know where you came from. It is about you. It is not about them. Ladies and gentlemen, resolve. So people start looking at you and saying, this man is just mean. No, you're not being mean. You are ordering your money. You are ordering your money. And finally, I know this. This is, this is the last one. I need you to fear poverty. But don't just fear it. Do something about it. If there's anything I am preaching in Uganda is I'm telling people if they need to fear anything, then let them not fear women. Let them fear poverty. Why? Because when you're a poor person, especially if you have been working and then you retire into poverty, you will never be regarded too as a person. This meeting, if it is populated by poor people, it will not begin until we see the people who we are assuming are wealthy. Poor people are almost not regarded too as people. Poor people almost are left to die in the hospital. They will leave you not to go for oxygen and they say, let them rest. They have had a full life because they know they cannot afford the treatment. Fear poverty. In poverty, you have no opinion. You have no opinion. How can you say things when you are poor? Ladies and gentlemen, the world is crude on poor people and don't be one of them. But as I live here, Grace, you will allow me to say these words with the next slide. If you only knew, if you only knew that you are right here, but it's, it's just adding a, la a letter T to here to get there. And T stands for time. Within time, you will get there. If you only knew that you are working, but soon you'll be in retirement, you'll start budgeting earlier. So finally, finally, my job is to talk. And even as I talk right now, after office hours, the office is going to pay me. No one is paying you to talk. That we finish this and also start talking. The only thing that is going to get you paid out of this is when, if Chris is kind enough to show that slide, it's when you act. Because at NSSF and in Uganda, we believe when you act, things change. If things have not changed in your life, if they have not changed in your life, check your action. Again, I am the one paid to talk. When we leave this, don't start another discussion around it. Just go into action. At least you do the wrong action. Reach the wrong price, but the, the, wrong, the, the wrong destination quick enough so that you can come back. But don't get into discussions. Talking only pays a few. Thank you so much, Grace. Thank you. Allow me to stop here. I am just seeing people wondering whether we are just confusing enemies. Uh, and somebody says, yes, people should fear poverty and uh, amazing presentation. Uh, bambuzul your, uh, Richard says, bambuzul your neighbors. That one is a great word. Oh, yes. Uh, Mike says, in poverty, shame, abuse are guaranteed. By the way, you know, poor people don't even have opinions in family meetings, eh? Uh, so there's nothing you can say. They will have to wait for the person with the money to come and dictate what we are doing. Um, yeah, so I think uh, quite a lot of takeaways. 
<laughs> talking pays a few. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. That was wonderful, wonderful, Apollo. I think my WhatsApp status is very busy tonight. Uh, I, I, one of my takeaways is that growing up is, I mean, growing old is mandatory. I mean, we have no choice. A lot of people have birthdays this month, next month, and all that. But growing old is a choice. I mean, growing up is a choice as well. Um, yes, Beverly says takeaway is we have to write down our budget. That's true. And my other favorite take home is also um, have an accident. Eh? Your January money should meet your 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 March money somewhere in your account. Eh? <laughs> That was good. And uh, yeah, if you have one or two questions we can take before we call it a night. Um, yes, 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 yes. Uh, right, I'm just trying to see whether we have any questions. Um, uh, my language, you say family, in a family there is one with the money always has the say. Hey, kabisa. Uh, right, budget before spending, absolutely. Yes, happy accidents in your account. Quite a lot of takeaways uh, right there. I think uh, Ben Kenyo says action. Absolutely, we need to act. Action, action, action. Less talking, more action. Right, and 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 let me ask you, Apollo. Um, what if, what if, uh, for example, you for those people who are living beyond their means, what would be your advice? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Grace. I, I think that people are living beyond their means in, from a, a point of ignorance. Uh, I, I need you to just start looking at it. How are you capable to live beyond the means if you are in full knowledge that you are living beyond your means? That's It's a paradox. So people are spending from their future. In Uganda, we have, um, we have NSSF, and one of the things people are advocating for is because I've exhausted all my money for this month, I've probably gotten a loan for the next five years. I probably have uh, obligations. Can you allow me now eat my money for 55? So you are, you are not in the knowledge that you're actually eating from your future. So it's about, uh, about the point of knowledge. And when you do a budget, it will sort of give you that reflection. It will give you that awareness that wait a minute it's right in front of you there's power in writing right in front of you will get to realize that wow i am spending a hundred million a year i am earning 70 million everything i'm spending is the, the balance is coming from the future somewhere or it's taking me into a ditch so those people living beyond their means one they have also made it fancy to look like they're living living beyond yellow they call it yellow You'll only live once, but you only live what you or you don't need to live multiple times. If you live right, once is enough. And living right is not living beyond your means. So uh people have tried to put all the cute things around it. They have tried to make it look like an in thing. But if in Uganda we say you just pick your money and keep quiet. If you are the person in control of your money and you're living within your means, you always have power. You will always buy off those things that they were, they, 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 they bought with money they didn't have to impress people that didn't care. You will always buy them off and you will, they will always go back to their level. So it's a temporary, it's, it's temporal addiction. It will, it reset back and you will be miserable all over again. All right. And then there's another question from Ben who says, there's something called black tax. How do I do we budget with this as well? Uh, this is to refer to other people, emergencies like fundraising for relatives, burials, uh, hospital bills, debt repayments, etc. Yes, do not hate me, but I'm going to say something. Please don't hate me. But even if you hate me, I know in Africa we... We, 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 we like people liking us because we assume they will bury us. I have come to realization from knowledge that I only need two people to bury me. And when I die, I really won't care. So we are, we are infested. We have a huge, back, a huge bill of black tax because we are looking for people to bury us. We have actually built huge homes in the village 
for people to stay when they come to bury us. So you have that huge home in the village. Uh, you have a farm at that place, but you pay someone to live in that place. While you, because you have built that home in that in the village, and people are seeing you have a huge home. You're the only one with power. You have a tub. You have tiles in your house in the village. They assume you have the money for them to an extra, an extra a hundred thousand to take care of their relative, to take care of their son. So they will definitely keep bringing you that. But you need to. You cannot give what you do not have. Be aware of what what you are. When someone is coming to you, you need to understand. And I don't think it's being, even being selfish. It's being self-aware. First, amass before you give out. Don't give out what you don't have. Two, please, please, and please help relatives from their homes. Don't bring them in. Most of my generation has grown up in a home with very many persons. But I can tell you all those persons, if there is a problem in that home, all those persons that have grown up and it's been a delight growing up with them, bring them up as, as, as an extended family, those people will never contribute to anything in that home. They will find their homes when they grow up. So don't even get into guilted. Just take a stand and don't get guilted. I have, I have uh, one of the things, uh, and I hope my Ugandan brothers don't go and report me to the family, but even the family knows here. For me, I have... I have a list of who I should bury. I have a list. And I will always, my, my, my emphasis will always go on medical bills. I do not contribute for funerals. But medical bills, I always invest where I can make a difference. For a funeral, everyone will be there. Everyone will want to cry, but no one, you don't really make any much impact. You only need four people to bury this person. You being there traveling all the way, it doesn't make impact. So some of this, just, you just have to change your attitude. It may, you might get a lot of backlash from your family, but they will like you. Let me tell you, if you are, a, if you are the wealthy one in your family, even the people you have no blood relation will call you their son. If you are poor, no one wants to relate with you. So you concentrate on being wealthy and helping the entire family other than staying in poverty, trying to help the family. Uh, that's my catch. But we can have a whole discussion about this. But also remember, Grace, every family is unique. So please practice wisdom. Practice wisdom. And I also want you to, I want to tell you this. Black taxes, someone has said it, I think John has put it right. It's manipulation, it's manipulation. People are manipulating, they are fighting, they're getting to your, to your, to your soft side and saying, you see, you, we, are your, we are your parents, you know your parents, you know your parents, some of, you, some of us are parents died. You are not, we, we didn't, we, you don't, we know our parents. Just be at that point and say, I know I can only give what I have. I am not going to kill myself because someone's child my brother got a kid from wedlock and I'm taking care of them. Okay. I, I thank you very much for that, Apollo. I agree with you. And, and I think at some point we need boundaries when it comes to black tax. There's only so much you can do. There's only so many people you can uh, save. I think a friend of mine, uh, Ben, and whoever else wants to uh, let us know, uh, there's a friend of mine who did that entire webinar on black tax. So I can share that Um that link with you uh, if you whatsapp us uh, Jacinta has already put our whatsapp group uh, if you wish you can also join and uh, you can be getting to know what's happening and what's coming up on Atara Solutions there are two last questions and I know we are short of time but there is uh, one who says any advice for medical student looking for a way to getting passive income uh, whoever that is it's an anonymous and uh, we will be discussing investment uh, the the in a few weeks uh, within the month of February. So maybe you can look out for that. But Apollo, if you have one sentence to answer that, then you can please do that. And then we have Lisa who says, for young professionals, is it right when you are advised to chase experience instead of money? Uh, both of those chase skill. Skill will bring you money. Don't chase money. They don't chase money. They don't, we don't look for money. Money is made. When you're looking for money, you are a thief because you're looking for where it is and then you pick it. But when you hone your skill, it will make money. For the young doctor, before even you get into entrepreneurship and all those other things, maybe what can your skill do? Then on top of that, 
add the, 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 the other streams of income, but your principal skill. You can be a doctor. Not all doctors are good doctors. There are doctors where they, when they bring out an in injection, you want to run away. Then there are doctors when you just talk to them, because of the approach they have given you, you actually even get the healing before the medicine. So work on being that doctor they look for. When you are not there, people will say, I'd rather die or I'd rather get well if, if I'm not seeing that doctor. So work on your young professionals, work on your skill. Right now here, Grace, you have called me, I'm from Uganda. You didn't call me, you are not giving me money, but you identified me because of a skill. A skill will get you far. I have gotten over 200 LinkedIn uh, people asking me. And in there, people, Grace, I want to, please don't come, I won't share. There are people giving me money just because I'm, 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 I'm appearing here. So money will come after skill. Chess skill, chess skill. Work hard. It has never gotten out of fashion. Thank you so much, Grace. Allow me to say good night. And thank you so much for holding this. It's quite an, uh, an empowering thing. Thank you. Thank you. Before you drop off, allow me to also pass my gratitude to you as well. Thank you very much for challenging our mindset. I think this was a very, very good choice for uh, kicking us off with season six of 2024. Thank you very much for preparing and thank you for saying yes uh, uh, to showing up here and also uh, just preparing and, and challenging our thinking. Uh, we really, really appreciate and uh, we will hope to interact with you more and looking forward to meet you when you're in Nairobi or when I come to Kampala. I, I hope we can get to have a cup of tea and maybe you can remind me uh, what lessons or I can be accountable for the lessons uh, we have learned. So our good people, we shall have the, this recording uploaded on our YouTube channel. Uh, so make sure that, uh, don't worry, it will be uploaded by Friday. However, we were live on Facebook on Atara Solutions page. So if you need to catch up, uh, allow us to also welcome you to this uh, webinar, which will be taking on the uh, place on the 15th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., uh, which is going for 2,800. And um, make sure you just come and learn on the legal intrigues and challenges when it comes to managing medical issues in the workplace and especially whatever it is is called termination on medical grounds there are people who want to call it a retirement on medical grounds i am told that is not a legal term but hey i am not an expert uh, peter kenyanjui will be a speaker on that particular day uh this is not for hr professionals only even if you're running a business or you're in charge of a team uh knowledge is power ignorance has do no defense especially when it comes to legal matters so please make sure that you join us for this session and I'm sure it's going to be very, very enlightening. Of course, we shall be here next Tuesday, um, same time, same place. And uh, of course, our topics are normally are different and I can promise you that we will have an engaging time. We are planning to, to discuss insurance. We are planning to discuss investments. We are planning to discuss relationships, especially on the week. I think it's what? The Tuesday of uh, Valentine's is. Valentine's is on which day? Is it on a Wednesday or Thursday? I think Valentine's is on, huh? Tuesday. Okay, fine. Yeah, whatever day that is, I'm, uh, that's Tuesday, the week of Valentine's. Uh, we shall be discussing uh, compatibility in relationships. A lot of people are separating uh, because apparently they are not compatible or they have just gotten married and realized they are no longer compatible. My God. Yes, so to our partners, Pathway Solutions, Vanessa Training Institute, Weekly in Kapla Mintito, uh, Profiles International, Elsa Mea, Steadfast Quality Solutions, Andovu, Star Discovery, Essence Park, and Nile Front Cottages. Thank you very much for your partnership. We appreciate you. And we look forward to uh, changing the world uh, through information together in this journey. We really, really, really appreciate you. Of course, to you, our audience, Asante Sana for making it and keeping it. Uh, uh here every tuesday brian musisi it's good to see you uh it's good to see you here and i need to become a member of hr mao now at this rate uh yes but it's good to see you here uh there's somebody who says share the link on oh my god we are not able to do that if you can copy our link it will be easier or i don't know jacinta are you able to see that number somebody has given their number and says that we send the whatever there Okay, this is hard. So to you, our audience, Asante Nisana for keeping it. Get to try to the Tara Solutions. 
We do this every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Please join our WhatsApp group and get to know what's coming next. And also get to interact with other professionals and like-minded people. Uh, please be on the lookout for next activities that are coming out on Atara Solutions. We have a paid webinar coming up in February. We have a, a public speaking session coming up. And we also have a road trip in May. So keep it locked and you will get to learn more about that. At this point in time, Thank you very much and uh, we look forward to an amazing, amazing 2024 and I wish you the very best as you budget your money. Please fear poverty and do something about it. Good night.